guys you are welcome to frankly speaking with glory elijah for today's episode i'm going to be teaching you guys how to survive in lekki lagos nigeria as a single girl yes and this topic is based on my experience as someone who used to live on the mainland and then moved to the island so prior to this time as at this time last year no not last year like two years ago I was living on the mainland and then about last year I moved on to the island that's Lekki Lagos that's how they refer to Lekki here in Nigeria island mainland island anyways it doesn't matter so when I moved to Lekki Lagos Nigeria it was a bit difficult for me to adjust to my new lifestyle to um, how I had to manage myself as a single girl who who is independent not getting support from family from from anywhere I was just doing all things by myself so um, when I got my apartment um, by the way, if you haven't seen my video about how I was duped in Lekki Lagos, you can find that in the description box. You can just click on the link and watch the video. So fast forward to when I moved into my current apartment. Oh my God, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. So the first thing I did um, before then, I had already paid yeah my furniture guy to make my bed so i already had my bed prepared so when i moved into my apartment the first thing i did was i went to a friend of mine who was who was moving houses as well and had um new appliances new cooking tools and every other thing and then this friend gave me his gas uh his gas cooker and um he gave me a lot of cooking utensils, pots, plates, spoons, and all of that. So that really went a long way to help me cut down my costs and it helped me shift every other thing that I had to get into my budget. So I I had already priced um, this four mouthed gas cooker, but then I realized that come on, what do I really need that for? So my friend gave me a camp gas cooker and voila, my kitchen was set. So as a single girl, who is trying to survive in Lekki, Lagos, Nigeria, the first thing that you need to have in your house is your kitchen utensils. Everything needs to be set. The reason is because you should be able to cook. And that brings me to my number two point. The second thing that would help you to survive in Lekki, Lagos, Nigeria as a single lady is you need to learn how to cook. Yes, if you don't know how to cook, well, don't kill yourself over that. There are tons and tons of videos on YouTube here that you can check out to learn how to make whatever kind of dish you are interested in. Or if you don't want to waste data or spend too much on data, you could talk to your friends, your family, anybody around you that's a good cook to put you through just the basic process of how to mix ingredients and then come up with a very, very good dish. So the reason why you need to learn how to cook is because, trust me, Lekki Lagos is not like the mainland. On the mainland, you can easily come out of your room or your apartment and then you see your neighbor mama busy selling rice and stew. Or you cross to the other side of the road and you see uh, one restaurant that they used to sell by soup. They call some of those people by Ibo. Or you see a mala joint. You can just go there with 300 naira, 200 naira. You've had your meal for the day. In fact, 500 naira can feed you throughout the day on the mainland. Yes, but it's the contrary in Lekki Lagos. Yeah, because in Lekki Lagos, although there are places like that that exist, but most of the time, those places, they only operate in the early hours of the morning, mostly for people that work, and they also operate late in the evenings, like let's say from 8, yeah, and their clientele are mostly um, the Okada riders, the cab drivers, you know, people who are hustling. But um, if you're not the sort of person that would want to come out that early or that late in the evening to look for food, then you need to definitely learn how to cook. And learning how to cook is going to save you a lot of money. I remember when I moved in newly and I wasn't, I had not started cooking yet in my kitchen. So I decided to just do outdoor foods for that day. Honestly guys, during lunch at work, I remember spending a thousand five hundred naira on meal. Then, when I got back home, that was about seven, I tried to do a late meal and I spent another one thousand five hundred naira. And that's a total of three thousand naira. Listen, don't call me cheap. Yeah, it's just me trying to manage my cost. I did my calculations and I realized that if I were to make a pot of soup that's going to last me for five days or one week, 
that 3,000 naira would go a long way to help me prepare what I wanted to cook. Yes, and I did it. And guess what, guys? I didn't even spend up to two, uh, up to 3,000 naira. I spent just 2,500 naira going to Oniru New Market. I bought the ingredients I needed. I wasn't too over the top. Yeah, I didn't buy too much shaki and all of that. I just bought the basics that I needed to make a soup and a stew. And guess what, guys? I made a full pot of soup and a full pot of stew for just 5,000 naira. So imagine if 5,000 naira would have been able to carry me for one week for, for food. Me that used to sell food a lot. <laughs> Nada. It wouldn't have been enough. So ladies out there. Oh God, I'm so used to saying guys. So ladies, that is why you need to learn how to cook. And that brings me to my number three point. Number three. Babes, you need to have a refrigerator in your apartment. Yes. The reason why you need to have a refrigerator in your apartment is so that when you prepare your meals or maybe you have veggies to store if you're the sort of person that loves to eat veggies like me i call myself a goat <laughs> but in a good way yeah because i eat a lot of veggies so if you're the sort of person that loves to um eat veggies yeah and for the sake of the fact that all of those things that you have prepared in your kitchen you have to store them in your fridge so you need to have a refrigerator yeah and your fridge needs to have a freezer Yes, so that you can preserve food. Honestly, girls, if you can do that, it will go a long way to helping you cut down costs on the feeding aspect. And um, fourthly, the fourth point I'm going to be giving is babes. Okay, I know this is going to sound like, oh my God, this girl has a poor mentality. But let's be realistic. Let's stop trying to impress people too much. Mm-hmm. Let's stop it. Now, I realized something. I did my calculations and I realized that uh, my office is not too far from my apartment. It's not too far from my house. So I did my calculations. The first day, I took um, a cab. I requested for a cab on one of those apps and then the cab took me to my office and that day there was serious traffic around the Lekki Koyiling Bridge so the cab took me to it took about more than the usual time I was supposed to get to my office and I was late so when I got to work after the cab um, ride I checked my fare and my fare was about 800 naira <laughs> another day there was surge and the cab fare was about 1,000 naira. A kilo I was like, come oh, on, I don't understand. So what I did was I tried using the bike. And I was just shouting at the guy, kadan kadao, kadan kadao. Yeah, I know it was risky, but I tried it. And the bike man took me to the office. And guess what? I paid just 100 naira for the bike ride. Coming back, I paid the other 100 naira. And then I did my calculations. Oh my God. Today, I spent only 200 naira going to work. The other day, I spent 2,000 naira going to work. And then I did my calculations. Okay, if I were to be spending like 200 naira every day for 30, uh, for 30 days, how much would that cost me? That would be about, if my math is right, let's say 6,000 6, naira or 8,000 naira for transportation to work. Now, I now did my other calculations that, okay, probably I want to go clubbing with the girls or for entertainment, I want to have fun or whatever. And then I just set aside like, let's say... 20,000 naira or let's say 15,000 naira. Guys, at the end of the day, I realized that I wasn't spending too much. But then I now did the calculation for taking a cab to work on a regular 1,000 naira, 2,000 naira every day. And I realized that, oh my God, my transportation cost only has eaten 50% of my salary. Or should I say even like 30% of my salary? And I realized that, oh my God, that's too much because I have to make my hair. I have to subscribe for DSTV. I have to buy my toiletries, I have to buy my lady care stuff, you know, every, I am a woman, oh my god, my life is so complicated. I have so many things I have to pay for, so many bills, and then if you have a younger one or you have to send money to your mom at home, you know, removing that from your salary, and then probably you have a side also. At the end of the day, you realize that, oh my god, you're not even married yet. You don't even have a family of your own yet and you are spending so much money still on the issue of transportation i know a lot of us out there are going to be saying that uh -uh, you want to risk your life all because of hundred naira you want to risk your life all because you're trying to manage cost listen let's be realistic it is god that protects people yeah i know that we as humans need to take precautions but i have had a car accident a couple of times too i had a head concussion you know so the truth is we cannot be too careful we have to try to be careful but we cannot be too careful and 
Listen, these people too, driving their cars or bikes, they're human beings too. So they would not want to put themselves at risk, not to talk of carrying you and also putting you at risk. So for me, that's just a tip, guys, or ladies, on how to survive in Lekki, Lagos, Nigeria. So the next tip and final tip that I am going to be giving is invest in buying wigs yeah because the truth is salons in lucky lagos are very very on the high side they're very very expensive i'm not trying to bring down the business of any salon here i'm not going to name names but it's very very expensive just to weave your hair come on it's very expensive five thousand era ten thousand era fifteen thousand era that's way too much and if you're the sort of person like me that loves to get a new weave like every two weeks imagine how expensive that's going to be so when i say invest in wigs you also want to invest in a personal stylist someone that you can trust to handle and care for your hair properly you could look for someone probably go to a new new market and you find a lot of them out there you just look for one of them and you know have a negotiation with the person and tell the person days that the person will come and be weaving your hair and you could be paying the person like probably a thousand euro a thousand five hundred euro two thousand euro at most it's not that much but if you say that you want to leave on the high side by always going to the salon to pay that much well all well and good for you this is just my own tip of how to survive in lekki lagos nigeria so ladies that will be all for this particular topic and my final say on this is please Learn to live within your means. Do not try to emulate anybody's lifestyle. Because if you cannot afford it, you might find yourself going to the extreme to afford it. I know of a certain girl that is obsessed with a certain girl on Snapchat. And because this girl is always going to Dubai, to America, to London, to you know different countries all over the world. And she's always very stylish, wearing different top-notch designer um, outfits, carrying their bags, carrying a lot of jewelries, carrying a lot of perfumes around, showcasing everything that she's got on Snapchat. This particular girl is totally obsessed with this other girl and she is doing everything in her power, within and without her power, just to be that way. And at the end of the day, she got into a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. So ladies, I don't want to even bore you with that story, but then it wasn't a bit, it wasn't a sweet story for that girl at all. So what I am saying is, the life out here in Lekki, Lagos can be very, very tempting. It can be very, very, um, it can do you long throats. Let me just use the simple word, it can do you long throats. So, do not be swayed, do not be tempted. You can be tempted, but do not fall into that temptation of trying to live too large or trying to live above your standard or above your means or above your income. If you do not have a nine to five job that pays well, if you do not have uh, a business of your own, if you do not have your own side gig that pays you well, then please try to live within your means. And that will be all for today's episode of Frankly Speaking with Glory. If you have anything to contribute, if you have anything to suggest, if you have any experience to share whatsoever, please do that in the comment section below. And if you are new to my channel and you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button to become a part of the family. Till next time, thanks for watching. Bye.